talking, um, we'll be going over dis uh, teaching our dog to alert or respond to disassociation or spacing out and um, getting your dog to respond when you're sleeping. Both of these are difficult and both of these are ones that it's not guaranteed that your dog will do it or can do it. Um, we'll start with the disassociating or spacing out. So before we start with teaching that, most people have some other sort of symptom that accommodates the spacing out or, dis or disassociating before it happens. So some people will get a little shaky before or they'll kind of do a weird breath before. Um, it's really important to find your symptom beforehand if you want the dog to alert. Some people don't, and in that case, that's why it would be response instead of teaching them to alert. So for me, before I space out, I usually do a weird breath or my breath breathing slows, and that's something that I can teach my dogs to pick up on. It's still not easy though, so a lot of times when you space out, your breathing is going to slow. Come here. Good girl. Your breathing is going to slow down because you're your body's going into a state of relaxation unless it's more of a trigger reaction then sometimes your breathing's going to speed up because it's a fear reaction so it just depends on why you space out and that's where we're going to work on response or alert so beforehand let's say you're someone who goes <gasps> right before or you shake before you would do the same thing i always do for teaching your dog to alert to things um so i would go <gasps> That's good enough, she nudged, that's something. Um, so that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna make that weird breath or you're gonna shake that in a certain way. Whatever your symptoms may be before you disassociate, you're usually not gonna know these symptoms, so having someone observe you would be better so that they can tell you exactly what happened before the disassociation. Um, and then for people who have no symptoms, because a lot of people don't have symptoms for disassociation or spacing out, they just do it. Um, it would be about what happens during. So most people for spacing out, they only see, oh, I just do, I do that too. But that's gonna be hard for the dog to pick up on because you're not doing anything differently. You're just standing there. And we stand around a lot. What you're gonna do, hopefully you do have symptoms during because that's gonna be a lot easier. Slow breathing, increased breathing, you're gonna exaggerate. So let's say I had a really increased breathing. <laughs> Good girl. Man, she almost didn't do that. I was about to pass out. Jesus. So you're just going to do the same thing you would do to teach them alert. So you would do this. Put your arm to the side. Make sure they know that you have the treat. Do the weird breathing. And they should not at least nudge you like she just did right there. Um, whatever the symptoms during is. That's what you're going to teach them to respond to. If you have no symptoms before and you have no symptoms during, that's where it gets tricky. So... We can start with this. You're just kind of standing there and the dog's gonna be confused because it's not gonna know what you're asking it to do. And you're just gonna do this. And then most people have a cue word for different alerts. So mine was always help for her. So I would just do this. Help. Good girl. So I'm teaching her to alert to that tiny movement and that's another thing that I personally do. If I do space out, I usually tick something and I don't even know I'm doing it because I mean, I'm spaced out, so I don't really remember spacing out at all. Um, but that's what I would do. I would just teach them a small movement to begin with and then take that away, but try to keep your hand up here so they still know what you're asking. That's what I would do. Again, you have to draw the line between we're just standing in a line and I'm spacing out. So I don't know if you want to get stiff because dogs can read that sometimes. Um, so if you want to get stiff and just kind of sit like this and just wait for them to respond to the tree being in your hand, you can do that. Um, you just have to make sure you're working around being in a line. So you also want to make sure that you're working. Okay, we're standing here, but I'm okay. So you can do a little thing, whatever you want that to be. Um, you can have them look at you before responding. So for her, I would just say focus and then alert or respond to that. And then, um, I would also teach her an okay command where if I was standing in a line, she would look to me and I'd have to watch her and be like, I'm okay. So that she knows I'm not, I'm not staring off. I'm just standing in line. That's a good thing to do too, is just teach them a command, like focus and have them look at you before alerting, um, or responding. And then, um, what are you doing? Have them also have a command to have them look at you and let them know that you're okay, no need to respond, uh-uh. 
no need to respond. That's what I would do. Um, again, this is very, very tricky. It's very, very gentle. Just make sure you're doing it as perfect as you can to make it very clear when they need to respond and when they um, need to leave you alone. Now we'll go over getting your dog to respond slash alert to you when you're sleeping. This is also tricky because not every dog will do this. Depends on your dog. If your dog's kind of a light sleeper all day, then it might work. Um, but it's still a tricky thing to do. Not every dog can do this. So if you have something that could kill you if you're not woken up to before it got too far, like let's say you have severe diabetes and it went in your blood pressure, your blood sugar may spike way up or way down but, um, during sleep time, which could send you into a coma or possibly kill you owner training is not the best thing for you, um, which I don't usually say, but in that kind of case, you need the dog to be able to respond at night and the program would be, a program dog would be better because they can find a dog that is capable and willing to do that even at night when they're tired. Um, not every dog is going to. So anyways, um, now that I got the disclaimer out of the way, do not blame me if your dog cannot do this. It's just your dog. Um, and don't blame your dog either. Anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to teach all of the alerts when you're laying down and you are barely moving. That sounds hard. That's because it is. Um, any alert that you teach during the daytime, you do want to start during the daytime. Do not teach them right away to alert or respond to you at night. That's a lot harder to teach. And we, when we're first teaching them something, we want them to be as aware and as able to do it as possible so um, when you're first teaching it do it during the day um, and then at night some people get nightmares some people have different medical issues where I don't know you may have to turn or you may get a seizure and you need your dog to alert and some dogs will do that but she would not be one of those dogs and I do have nightmares but she, she I don't think well she might once she gets older but for now in this puppy stage Puppies get very, very tired, so for now, at her age, at night, she is out. She does not care about anything. She just wants to sleep. Um, so, obviously, none of your dog's going to be cut out for it. It really depends on your dog. Keep in mind, with that being said, even if your dog can do this, it is not an easy thing to train. They have to know, they have to know the alerts or the response during the day when they're wide awake and you're wide awake. Just because it's easier to teach when you are trying to show them what to do in public cases. You're not typically going to be sleeping in the middle of Walmart, so we don't need to worry about that. But, if you need your dog to alert you at night, what you would do is you would lay down on your bed and teach them to do the alert or the response that they already know with you having those symptoms in your bed. So you're not going to say anything or really do anything to force them to do it. Um, like if they know pressure therapy and you have nightmares, you're going to teach them to respond to you kicking or screaming or whatever your nightmares, your nightmare consists of or whatever your physical signs are when you're having a nightmare. Um, some people it's very low key, like you might make little tiny like mouse like noises. In that case, you would just make the noises or do the things you would usually do in the middle of a nightmare or whatever the thing is you're trying to get them to alert or respond to at night. Um, when you're sleeping you're just gonna do that and then you're gonna ask them to do something that they already know how to do they should know hand signals this is one of the reasons I tell everyone to make sure your dog knows hand signals and knows verbal commands I can tell her to sit and she'll sit but I could also do this and she'll sit same thing with anything else that I teach her and that's why this is important because sometimes there are certain things that you need to teach them without you when you're teaching them, you can't speak to them because in the real situation, you would not be able to speak to them. So make sure that they know the hand signal for the alert or response you're looking for, and then ask for it with the hand signal and that's it. You're not gonna do anything else. You're not gonna force them to do it. You're not gonna talk to them. If they're really having issues, that's when you can talk to them, but really work on enforcing that hand signal before you start this so that they really understand what you're asking for when you say, Let's say you want deep pressure therapy when you have nightmares. That's what, that's all I can think of because that's what I would need. Um, her pressure sign is this when I'm laying down. I just go like this and she knows that that means pressure. So she would be able to do that. But that's all I have to do. But I can keep crashing and kicking and screaming or whatever that I would have during a nightmare. And just do this and she would understand, oh, that means I need to do pressure at this time when you're doing this. So um, that's 
that's all that I would do. I can't really demonstrate that because inside my house is really poor lighting and I'm not going to lay on this. On this. Um, just make sure that whatever you're doing, try, try to always teach them hand signals because things like this happen where you discover you may need them to alert in certain situations where you may not be able to talk. And keep in mind that this is also not an easy thing to teach your dog to do. Um, I would recommend doing it on a set schedule, like whenever you start going to bed, do it right before you would usually go to bed. Um, I always go to bed at like 11, so I would start it like right at 1030, do the, do the training, and then at 11 I would take her outside at like I usually do and go to bed. That way they understand it's going to be late and I'm going to be tired, but I still have to do it. Um, you can start the training during the day when they may be a little bit more awake, but your end result is to get to, well, your mid result would be to get to a point where you can do it at night when it's close to their bedtime. Anyways, I think that's everything. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments. Questions, comments, concerns, go in the comments. Keep in mind that there is no one set technique for every single dog. Every single dog, dog is different. Every single dog learns differently. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and subscribe. You can hit the bell notification. That way, every time I post a video, it'll notify you. And if you're subscribed, it's a lot easier to find my channel because I'm not a very big channel. That way, if you ever want to go back to a video, you can just search up through your subscribe list. Um, I think I got everything. Anyways, as always, she loves food.